Government workers have been down lately, been frustrated, been discouraged, not motivated. And it's for two reasons mainly. The first one is the pay is not keeping up with inflation. And it's not just inflation because we know that the government pay has been struggling to keep up with the private sector pay. There's a gap in between them. And it's usually in larger cities like Los Angeles, Chicago, Detroit, New York City, and not much has been done about it. Not only larger cities, but we've also seen it at the higher ranks. So if you're talking about a lawyer or a doctor, these individuals are not gonna get paid comparatively with the private sector. So add on to that, you have inflation. The pay raise that we're receiving, we're supposed to receive this coming year, 2023, that's 4.6%, right? But if you look at inflation right now, year over year, it's somewhere around 8%. So double what our actual pay increase will be. And this means that we're losing money, not just a little bit of money, we're losing a considerable amount of money because our buying power is being eroded, is disappearing. So if you're a family or even a single person and you were barely making ends meet, let's say this year, throughout this year, you're barely making it, or maybe you're paycheck to paycheck, what is gonna happen in 2023 when your buying power has been reduced steadily throughout the year and the pay raise that's supposed to be a cost of living increase is not enough to meet that gap? Does that mean you're going to be operating in the negative now? I know a lot of people are probably gonna be overdrafting on their accounts. So then also we have the salary cap. This mainly pertains to your larger cities. I know it pertains to Washington, DC. We have GS-15s and they earn about 170, 176,000 a year. Then we have senior executives, which earn pretty much the same, if not just a little bit more. So there is not much financial incentive for a GS-15 to get the promotion to SES, which is your senior executive, because there's no financial incentive. Would you assume twice the responsibility for the same pay? I know a lot of people wouldn't. I would, I would probably not do that myself. So this is something that has been an issue year over year to increase the pay cap. Now, I know this doesn't pertain to a lot of people in a lot of the smaller states, a lot of the smaller cities where your average is probably GS11, GS12 is probably the highest it goes. Maybe the director is like GS13, but that's not how it is in the DC area. So what happens is a lot of people from GS15, they'll just stay at GS15, or the, if they wanna make more money, they'll look at jumping into one of the private contracting companies that we have around here in order to have like a 20 or 30% increase in their salary because that's the only way that they're gonna get that increase. They're not going to make it just by going to SES. The second big reason for this drop in morale is because more and more federal workers are being called back on site into the office. So gone are the days, well, 2020 and 2021, where you had 80, 90% of the force that were working from the comfort of their couch, that's going away. Now managers and you have management that want people back into the office. So that's a little discouraging. It's discouraging, especially if you know that you were performing or your team was performing at a high level. So there's really not a huge need for you to be back in the office and they still want you back in the office. That's making a lot of individuals frustrated. Now the situation in the Washington DC area we have people, most people are going back into the office, but it's only for one or maybe two days a week. And the other three days, you're able to work from home. But that's not the case everywhere. And then on top of that, you have some jobs being misclassified. So you apply for a remote work type job and you think that's what you're getting. But by the time the interview comes up, then you have the hiring manager tell you, oh, well, it's just remote work for now just for the next couple of months, and then we're gonna transition it into a teleworking job. Well, most administrative government jobs have a teleworking function already built into them. But you should not advertise a job as 100% remote if it's not 100% remote, right? That's misleading, that's frustrating. The biggest difference between 100% remote is in, the, in its name, 100%. 100% remote, you can work for the agency in any one of the 50 states, it doesn't matter. You wanna live in Maine? You wanna live in Alaska? That's fine. Telework is 
you have some obligation and commitment to actually go into the office at some point in time during your tour of duty. Now, not all federal agencies feel equally talking about their morale. So some of them are actually a lot worse and then others have actually increased over the months. The biggest decrease in morale is the Export Import Bank, which a lot of people don't even know where that's at. If you were in Washington, D.C., you know where the White House is at? About a block and a half from the White House, you have the Department of Veteran Affairs. And on top of one of the buildings of the VA, you will have that bank there. It's a really small agency. And the only reason I really know is because I worked for the Veteran Affairs and I was directly below the Import-Export Bank. Then we see the Social Security Administration that was marked with negative seven decrease in morale and then also the Justice Department, which was a negative six decrease in morale. And I think it's a good time to mention, if your happiness or your morale is impacted by your agency or by anyone, it's really your responsibility to be happy, right? If you're not happy, then you have yourself to blame. You do not have to stay in that agency. You can go to another agency. In the DC area, we have pretty much all the agencies here. So it's not uncommon for someone to work one, two, three years in one agency and jump and work in a different agency. So you see people jumping from Department of Justice, Department of Agriculture, Department of Agriculture, the Department of Veteran Affairs. And it's like a merry-go-round of job hopping. If you're not happy where you're at, you need to pick up, move, and go somewhere else. If the Department of Justice is not letting you telework, not letting you be remote, then maybe the Department of Homeland Security will. And if they're not, if you don't like their culture, that's fine, go to the Department of Energy. And if you don't like that, I mean, you just keep going and going and going. Okay, so despite this, we do have those agencies where morale has actually increased. And this is pretty surprising because we have SBA, right? The Small Business Administration. That was like at the top of the list. Right below that, you had the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission. People there seem to be real happy. And all this information about who's happy here, where's the morale at over there, that information is pulled from all federal agencies and is compiled. This is done through a survey that we're asked to fill out periodically. We fill out the survey and a consulting group pulls that information together to paint the picture and that's how we have this information. So I'll try to get the link to the report. If you wanna check it out, I'll drop it down below. Now, if you are a federal government employee right now or maybe you're considering getting a federal government job in the future, then one thing that's been on a lot of people's minds recently is the government shutdown. And if you wanna know how a government shutdown impacts your pay and benefits, then I want you to watch this video next. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.